Let's go out there. It's April 5th. It's not Frank Curzio. It's the Wall Street Unplugged Podcast. We're bringing the headlines and... Uh, tell you what's really moving these markets. Hope all of you enjoyed the NCAA tournament. Favorite time of the year. Championship game is on Monday. This year, there was no number one seeds. I think it was the first time that not any number one seeds made the final four. But there was actually no number one, number two, and number three seeds. So, everyone's excited about this. More parity. You have the transfer portal that allows you to leave a school and play that year. And, you know, so if you're good in like a division no one ever heard of, you can go to like some of these big teams. By the way, I just heard that Bill Self... Maybe announcing his retirement to health issues. I hope that's not true. The greatest coach, especially out there right now. I uh, hope that's not true. Hearing rumors about it. We'll see. But anyway, it's such a great time of the year. And again, when you listen to everyone, they're all like, this is great. You know, you have these teams get in there. It's so exciting. I'm going to say what everyone else is afraid to say, but it kind of sucks. It really does. I mean, it's nice if you see a team get in here and there, but not really to the championship. I mean, you have this Cinderella story like, oh my God, they could actually win and, and it's great if it actually happens, but how often does it happen? You get some outside school that's never there win the whole entire thing. And when you look at all sports, you know, you have Boston, you have the Yankees, you have the Patriots. Those are teams you either love or hate, but you always watch them. You either really hate them or you love them. It makes it exciting. But this year's NCAA tournament at UConn, right, came out of nowhere, really. They were ranked number one. Then the middle year, again, I studied all these teams, did a bracket, and two guys that I really respect picked UConn. So I went back and really looked at them and said, wow, they just, you know, they started picking up in the middle of the year. Uh, at the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, they, they kind of fell. And then they started picking up again. But then they lost early in their tournament. I'm like, yeah, the four seed, tough division. I don't know. They blew out everyone, every single team they played. They, they beat Gonzaga, which is a, a pretty good team, by 26. And then you have the final four, and they're playing San Diego State in the final. Being favored by only seven and a half points, which I thought was a joke. Again, they beat Gonzaga by 26. They beat, I think it was average point of victory. It was like 22 points. And... Was watching that game any fun? I mean, he had fun maybe, maybe for like a minute. They cut it to five, and it was like two, three points. My Connecticut game was over. But the whole game from almost, you know, five minutes in, I mean, the outcome was already certain. Yeah, they cut it to five, but you didn't have that feeling like they were actually going to blow it. And all of a sudden, they, you know, they didn't wind up blowing them out. Is that any fun for anyone watching a game like that? I mean, I like to see the ratings. I can't picture them being any good. I mean, same this year with the NCAA championship game but for football, right? You have Michigan. Michigan blew away Ohio State. It was a surprise, and they played TCU. You're looking forward to, you know, this Georgia-Michigan matchup, but TCU beats Michigan. Everyone's like, wow, TCU, man, outside conference. They make it. What have they make the championship? Then they lose 65-7. to I mean, come on. That's a championship game. I mean, we all would rather watch a great Super Bowl, regardless of my Eagles being in it. But, you know, it was decided... Pretty much by a touchdown, if it wasn't for some idiot ref making a terrible call, which I ranted about. But yeah, you kind of wish for these things, but then you get these championship games that suck, right? And you don't want that. You want these crazy games like the game before was a buzzer beater, right? San Diego State, Florida Atlantic and stuff. But you know, I get it and you root for it, but do you really want that? I don't. I want a really good championship game. And this year, holy cow. It even sucked for, for, the, for the women's tournament, which, you know, I never find exciting. I just don't. I, I love women's sports when it comes to tennis and other things, but basketball just wasn't. But yet you have you know, this girl, Caitlin, who's, who's the Michael Jordan shooting from, you know, Michael Jordan, probably Steph Curry. And then what do you do? You give her like a technical. This is the first time. That, did you see the ratings on that game? I mean, holy cow, it was a great game. Can tell us you. Great game. And what do they do? They give her like her fourth foul on because she just pushed the ball out of the huddle and they call it. Like, don't you understand the situation? Like, nobody watches women basketball. Very, very few people. You just look at the ratings. It's a fact. Now you have someone that you're like, holy cow, I want to see this. This is a great game. It's all over TikTok and everything. I mean, just massive. Blew away. Blew away every single championship game I've ever watched. Easily. And then the best player, you, you basically, 
you force her to play less time against a great, great team like LSU. It's just, you know, man, I don't get it. But for me, watching games like this, it's not enjoyable. Like watching UConn, I'm, I even tweet about it. I'm like, really, seven and a half? You beat, you just you blew out. Miami's a good team. You kind of blew them out, right? I mean, they came back, a, not even come back, but I think it was 13 at the end, but still, that game was over. Every team that they played was basically over at half. Every team. In the last two or three, they, they beat really good teams, blew them out, and now you're playing San Diego State. I'm like, they're only fair by seven. Hey, they should be fair by 15. And watching that game, it, it wasn't exciting at all. And same again, like Georgia blowing out TCU. I mean, people want to see that. If you're a Georgia fan, you want to see that. But lots of times when your team's not in it, you just want to see a really good game because you're a sports fan. And, and the championships are really shitty this year at NCAA across the board. Anyway, I'll say it. Nobody else wants to say it, but I'll say it. Those teams that get in and the teams that you hate the Yankees, but yet, you know, I'm going to watch them. I want someone to kill the Yankees. I'm a Mets fan. And the Mets never make it. Hopefully, maybe, they're getting a little bit better now. Cohen's a little, you know, it's nice when you're worth like $100 billion and just spending money on everyone and anything, which is cool. It's nice. I don't care. I'm a fan. Hopefully, he spends all his money and goes broke and buys every great player. That's awesome. The Mets would be great. <laughs> but anyway... It was fun watching the game. And before I get to my monologue here, which is going to be very personal, a little bit of rant, something you need you need to hear. So I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Masterworks, using tokenization to disrupt the $1.7 trillion art industry. Through this site, www.masterworks.com, anyone can sign up. You can invest in a number of great paintings from legendary artists. So you can take a piece of these, right? That's what tokenization is all about. You don't have to be this rich millionaire type and just say, oh, okay, you know, I can't afford No, you can buy pieces of this, which is fantastic. So no longer... Just an elite, super rich, famous person thing. You can invest in these paintings. Anyone participate in their upside. So it's a great platform. Very easy to use. It's free. So once you sign up, you get all the paintings listed on their site. See which ones you want to invest in. Own a piece of. Similar to like a stock. You also provide some great educational material. For people who are not familiar with fine art in that market. So you can learn a lot in their site. You can get, learn more at www.masterworks.com. That's www.masterworks.com. So, as you guys know, a few weeks ago, I got a letter from Bank of America. And it said I had to clear out my account for courtesy research. I didn't break the law. I've been accused of breaking the law. Actually, I wasn't accused of anything except from being connected to the crypto world by making an investment in a company. That's all I did. And I had three weeks they gave me to clear out in the middle of tax season. <laughs> Right, And when I called a number, which they gave me, which they provided, you guys should know, I played on this podcast. They gave me no appeal process, no review. They just said, F you, we're closed, we're no longer doing business with you. And since then, I started doing a ton of research on why this happened. And the shit that I uncovered, it should really scare the hell out of you. Scare anyone that actually has a bank account in the U.S. Now, I'm not this fear monger. I don't make bullshit claims to scare people to buy my products. Anyone listen to me, Wall Street Unplugged podcast, this podcast. For 15 years, I've been doing it. I was following my career for over 30 years. They know that, you know, you know this. There's kids with your new listener going, oh, okay. You're trying. I'm not. I'm not trying to scare the hell out of you. I got my bank account closed. I did nothing wrong. Now, it starts with a guy who I was unfamiliar with. And now, the whole world's going to get familiar with him. It's going to be because of us, because of me. His name is Michael Sue. Okay, he decided that banks regulated by the FDIC and even those that weren't should no longer do business with people like me. You might be saying, who is this guy? I never, I never heard of him before this, right? It's a good question. He's probably one of the most powerful people in the world because Sue is the comptroller of currency. Now, what does that mean? I heard of that before. I never knew what it meant. Okay, it's defined as an independent bureau of the U.S. Department of the Treasury. So the OCC charters, regulates, and supervises all national banks, federal savings associations, and federal branches and agencies of foreign banks. They say, we ensure the banks we supervise operate in a safe and sound manner, provide a fair access to financial services, this is what they say, treat customers fairly, this is on their website, and comply with applicable laws and regulation. The OCC receives no appropriations from Congress. Hmm, that's interesting. If you read that definition, you know that Sue controls the money. 
we all hear about the Fed. The Fed controls everything. Whoever's running it, Greenspan, Bernanke, Yellen, Powell, whatever. We hear about those people all the time. The power they have over our lives, over the, the global economy. But if you look at what happened, and you're looking to sue, and I believe I'm pronouncing his name right, H-S-U, he controls them all. I mean, he's an unelected dictator appointed by the president, running everything inside the Office of the Comptroller of Currency. Again, this is called the OCC. I mean, a bureaucracy, if ever there was one. But in 2012, the OCC devised a similar plan to what they're doing with crypto. Because here's a guy, and I went, sorry, it's January 27th, you can look this up. The Fed wrote a letter based on OCC and said, you know, again, a lot of lawyer jogging in there. The research and the homework for you. Basically saying that no one, you better not do any business with crypto companies. You can't. There's a reason why every bank, even the big banks. So I can't even blame Bank of America. Bank of America was forced into this. JP Morgan was for all these companies that would sign and do a little bit of business. And even the bigger ones like Signature and Silvergate, bye-bye. You were gone. Every single one of them. And you look at this and you say, what the, you know, for me, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I mean, did you know, this is supposed to be a due process. You're supposed to be able to, to call someone and say, wait, wait, what's going on? 100% of my revenue, is, you know, we're financial, we, we help people. We're independent, okay, from all the bullshit. Why are you coming, why would you do this to us? Again, we open up new bank accounts, we're fine on that end. But it was a real pain in the ass. It was a shock. Imagine you're running a business, very busy, and all of a sudden you're like, well, you better close your bank accounts in three weeks. We're going to shut you down, send you a check. And go elsewhere because we no longer deem your business fit to do anything with our bank. We don't want you to associate with our bank anymore. And you're like, wait a minute, you know what the fuck just happened? But there's a playbook here because in 2012, the OC devised a similar plan. This is during the Obama administration. They call it Operation Choke Point. So Operation Choke Point had one objective: to snuff out the kinds of businesses they don't like. They don't care if they're illegal or not. They went at the pawn shops, went to gun stores, payday lenders, gambling companies, and told all the banks to lean on these guys to make sure you don't provide accounts for them. And people out of nowhere just said, hey, you know what? You're done. You don't have an account at the bank. If you can't operate through a bank in the United States, you can't really run a business. You can run a cash business, okay? You can run different businesses. I'm talking about if you really want to scale a business, you need operations. You need ACH access. You need to pay your employees, you can't do that if the bank says, F you, you can't do business with us. And that's fine if that business is illegal. But crypto is not illegal. We've given Gensler, we've given the SEC, we give the FCC, we give all these, three, four years, I remember Anderson Horowitz in 2019 had this whole entire conference with, with regulatory authorities that saying, let's regulate this, let's figure out rules in place. You have Coinbase, you have... Paxos, you have all these companies. It was at the Wyoming trying to fill out started char state charter bank as, as a holding company to do business within crypto that was put on hold for two years that they actually sued the government for and said, okay, we need this approval. Why the hell aren't you doing this? And you know when they said no? January 26th, the day before they sent up the letter the 27th that all the banks can no longer do business with crypto companies. But again, this is a playbook. And it's happening under the Democratic watch under, again, that don't want to get political here, but this happened under the Obama administration. And then you'll hear how it got reversed a couple years later on the new administration. And now it's happening again, picking and choosing what industries could do banking with U.S. banks. So back then they made them shut down. And you look at the bankers now, they said, you know, for crypto, no at first. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to shut down. This is the beginning. And actually there's you know, they came back. The government said, your decision to move forward will result in immediate unplanned audit of your entire bank. This is a direct quote, according to the banker. A direct quote. So in the end, the OCC crippled and closed so many businesses, hundreds if not over a thousand businesses. This is back, again, not long ago. A few years ago, Right? on a purely subjective, moralistic, illegal campaign. Illegal. 
So if you look at it saying, well, how could they get away with this? Well, they didn't. Because there's a law firm called Cooper and Kirk. Look them up. I didn't know who they were. One of the most powerful law firms in Washington. You look at guys that defended more cases at the Supreme Court, arguably one of the toughest lawyers, toughest litigators against Supreme Court. And they only take cases that they could win. These guys are huge, massive. I didn't know that. So this law firm decided to sue all the government authorities, FDIC, OCC, Federal Reserve, saying this is unconstitutional. You're closing businesses without due process, without listening to them, right? This is against the Fifth Amendment and went after them. And you know what? They beat the government. They beat them. And it took three years, almost four years for them to beat them. And when Trump got elected, you know, not that Trump had anything to do, that's when it got overturned. And it got overturned. It was a pretty big deal. I'll explain why in a minute. Because now a lot of these industries that had handcuffs on them started to boom, and they're booming now. But today, the government's like, I don't care. We're doing this again. They're doing it again with crypto, shutting down an industry because of an agenda without due process. It's being called Operation Choke Point 2. And guess what? Last week, Cooper and Kirk announced that they're suing the government again. They created a 34-page white paper detailing how this is unconstitutional and going after them again. The same basis. Now again, it's a big deal because it took three to four years to settle for those other industries, but look what happened to a lot of those industries. The porn industry is a boom and it's regulated now. Look what happened to the gambling industry. I mean, look at the gambling industry. Holy cow. I mean, so the history, when you're looking at, at legal sports, we talk about online sports betting. If, so if you look at, at May 2018, so this is like a month or two after this settlement, uh, they said now that the absence of a federal regulated system, which the federal government decided to regulate and said none of you guys go up on bank accounts and gambling, especially online gambling, outside, you know, Vegas and stuff like that. But now the federal regulate now that... In the absence of that, the states, they ruled that, hey, this is considered a constitution that the states are free to establish their own sports gambling laws. And what happened in 2018? Have you noticed, if you're watching sports on television, what happened? How they're all promoting? You have announcers in the middle of the game saying, oh, what are you going to have the second quarter? Oh, I got LeBron scoring 14 points. He's going to have three rebounds. I'm taking the over. They're actually promoting fan duel and whatever. When they were against it, totally against it. We don't allow gambling on sports. Not anymore. They could all make money off of it. So you look at by June 2018, what happened? All these states, one by one, started taking advantage of this repeal. In New Jersey, Rhode Island, Mississippi, West Virginia, New Mexico, say 30 states in the District of Columbia allow sports gambling. With five more set to join in the coming months. Pretty crazy. Now, there was estimates when this passed, in 2018, 2019, this estimate saying the gambling industry, just online alone, is going to be like a $10 billion. They had, I think they had like, you know, so estimates for $8 billion, $9 billion, $10 billion by 2025, 2026. We're in 2023. We're $13 billion already. Just online. And we're talking about a market. This is how much revenue they're generating, meaning that that's probably a vig of 10%. So you'd have to times that by a multiple of 10. That's how big just online sports gambling is because of them reversing this law. A law that was complete bullshit going after gambling companies because the government just said, hey, you know what? The OCC came out and said, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to shut down all these businesses. We don't care if it's legal. We don't care if the people are doing the right thing. We know that people aren't doing the right thing. Like who isn't doing the right thing? Every industry has criminals in it. Every industry across the board. Every industry. You're going to shut down even the good players? You know, people are doing the right thing, but this is when the innovation is coming from? And you have to ask yourself, why? Why would they do this? There's got to be a reason. There's got to be an agenda here. And why? And if you look at creating your own digital currency, maybe that's why maybe you're shutting down all the... You should have all the stable coins and going after the stable coins. They're trying to work with the government to back these stable coins by treasuries, US dollar, whatever. And, and the government's like, we don't even want to hear from you. F you. Really? Why? We do know that there's 11 nations that now have their own digital currency. We do know that Bank of Japan, China, ECU, 
all piloting programs along with us? I mean, is this the reason? Like, what is the reason behind this? Picking and choosing. Because you could argue, and, and not argue, for me, I would say that this is fact. But the government closing banks like Silvergate, which no fraud was discovered. Again, they had access to the biggest player in the industry. They sold their treasuries for a loss. They covered $8 billion. Their biggest client stayed at the bank. And then all of a sudden, the government came out and said, nope. Everyone better get at the hell out of that bank. All the major ones, all you had Coinbase leave Silvergate, Paxos leave Silvergate, Circle left. They all left at the same time because they were told, you better leave or you're done. And that's why Silvergate, it, it wasn't forced but they were like, we have no choice to liquidate now because you just cut off our leg. We have no growth. So Signature closed, right? And then you saw the run of the bed. Then what happened? You saw uh, Silvergate closing. You saw Signature. Signature stock started getting nailed. Now you have all these accounts. There's at least $5 billion worth, including Anderson Horowitz and all his businesses, and he's in crypto. They're the biggest venture capital firm in the world, have ties to everywhere. And they see what's going on with Silvergate. They see what's going on with Signature. How they're getting letters being saying that you you have to leave no more. You can't do business at all. So what happened? Well, now they have all this money at Silicon Valley Bank and they've removed it. And you look at 200 billion in assets, but it, probably five to 10 billion was removed. And you talk about Web3 who have the biggest ties to social media. And they went on this whole social media and saying, wow, Silicon Bank, man, you know, we just saw 5 10% of the assets leaving. Then you're saying, wait a minute, this bank isn't insured, which, by the way, is a definition of the OCC. To make sure we have a safe environment for banks. That's your fucking job, right? That's your job. Instead, you're going after the crypto companies, and what happened? And I could pull up information on, on in five minutes of the exposure to how much bank assets of every publicly traded bank and how much is insured. So now you have Silvergate, and now you're like, wow, we just saw what happened to Silvergate, right? So you have Silicon Valley, but we saw what happened to Silvergate, where Silvergate was forced to close and then sell treasuries before the maturity and have big losses on them. You're like, wow, Silicon Valley. A lot of their assets aren't insured. This is how this whole entire thing was caused. The whole crypto community, all the big names knew that Silicon Valley was going to be in, in huge trouble. They knew because they had their accounts also at Silvergate and Signature and said, holy shit. And then you close Signature, didn't allow them to sell their assets, their crypto assets, right? You closed them immediately, but you let, what? First Trust, what, some of the other banks, right? Just, hey, you know, let's see if they can work things out. Immediately, Signature was closed like, holy cow, like they just took it over immediately. And so you better sell off all your crypto assets immediately, right now. Close them. Silvergate. I forgot what took, is it New York, whatever, New York community, whatever, it took over, I believe it was Signature, and now they have till today, which they gave them, I think, two weeks and said, everyone at this bank better have their account closed or we're just closing it for you and going to send them a check, kind of like we did, they did to us. But you could argue and be right that the banking crisis was led by what you did to crypto because of the OCC, the person that's supposed to protect the banks, to safeguard them. So what do you think is going to happen? To me, I don't think it's going to take three years. I think it's going to take a year, year and a half. But this has to get reversed unconstitutional. And when it does, it's going to open up avenues for the right companies, just like you saw at FanDuel, just like you're seeing with all these companies within gambling, this massive growth, right? And you have a lot of companies that, again, that are just roll-ups, issue more shares, buying more companies, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and, bigger, and, bigger, and it hasn't been the best result for some shareholders, but you're going to see huge winners. And we're not talking about a $13 billion market. We're talking about a trillion plus market, a market that went to $3 trillion. A market that even the biggest crypto players understand that needs to be regulated. But this is where the innovation is coming from. This is just about 2% of what I uncovered so far. All the letters, Michael Sue, all the shit started happening as soon as he was just put in this position. Remember, they're supposed to be perfectly independent. And he came in, no surprise, in the middle of 2021 when all this stuff started happening through 2022 and then finally came out with this decision. A coordinated effort. Now, the previous CEO of the COO, or the CCO, right? The previous guy, this guy Brooks, actually came out against Sue. 
And he said, this is definitely a coordinated effort by the government to shut down crypto. A coordinated effort. Again, it's supposed to be separate from everything. This is the guy who ran Comptroller of Currency. He ran that division. And he's actually saying, holy shit, he can't believe this. But the stories that I'm uncovering, the people like, you know, even Barney Frank, is, you know, he was on the signature board saying, holy shit. I mean, these guys, they can't really tell this story. We can. And these are the stories that we're going to cover in Wall Street Unplugged Premium. These are stories, again, if you're looking at, at, we're independent. We don't have an agenda. We're not being paid by anyone from the outside parties, uh, from anything, right? That, that it's saying, oh, well, you can't say that, and you can't say this, you can't say that. I watched CNBC yesterday covering Trump, and everybody, this is a financial news program that I want to see financial news updates. They're covering Trump, and they bring on one liberal guy, and then they bring on one, another liberal. No, like, both sides just saying, wow, this is crazy, and then there could be riots after he speaks, uh, you know, after his arraignment, and I can't believe that he still has support after, you know, the, the insurrection, all this shit, and I don't want to hear that shit on CNBC. I mean, I loved it when it wasn't a biased channel. I feel like it's, you know... Part of MSNBC now. I don't want to hear that. Now when I'm watching that channel and I shut it off. I just shut it off. I'm like, I can't watch this today. I don't want to hear it. I mean, both sides have an agenda. They all have an agenda. It's not, they used to bring on, remember 60 Minutes? Remember Meet the Press? They used to bring on people, Democrats, Republicans. No longer. It's only one sided. Fox Business, one sided. No, there's no debates anymore. Nobody debates. That's not us. We go where the truth is. That's what we did with COVID. Like, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe. And this is early on. Now everyone believes it. Early on, I'm talking about when this first happened, February, March, and the emails I was getting from doctors, April. You know, this is about my kids. This is about my mom being sick. And holy shit, you know, I'm worried about this. And I'm reporting things. And doctors are giving me reports and studies and saying, don't mention my name because I'm going to get fired. Are you kidding me? I thought everyone should be on the same side here. Obviously, we're not. Obviously, we're learning tons of stuff, right? All of a sudden, no, it does. I thought this is going to prevent everyone from getting COVID. No, no, no. You need like nine boosters first, and we're going to put the you know the 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 person on the board is going to be the leader. He's going to be the spokesperson on the board of Pfizer that's going to tell us whether we need this shot. I mean, come on, holy shit! You want to talk about agendas? You want to talk about biases? Not us. We can go after people like this, and we are, and I am. Because you're going to hear a lot more about this. The story's not going away. But more importantly, it's going to create great opportunities for you when shit like this happens. That's when you make the most money, when you see laws changing. The reason why the politicians make a fortune off of all this insider information, they know which companies are going to benefit and not benefit by the laws changing or which laws they're going to implement and pass. Obviously, it's going to benefit a lot of companies. Obviously, they're getting bribes. Lobbying dollars from those companies. We see it. It's all there. We all know it. But this story, this is an incredible story. It's an incredible story. Cooper and Kirk did a great job fighting it, beating the government, and they're going after them again. And it's not going to take three years. And when this, this is regulated, they're saying, okay, this is the framework. This is what you're supposed to do, just like we saw with the gambling industry, porn shop industry. Look, there's like two, three major players there, billion dollar companies now. We have a regulated system, and a lot of these companies want that because they realize how big this industry is, and you eliminate all the bullshit and the black market and all the garbage within crypto. This is going to be a multi trillion dollar industry. And we're going to get ahead of this thing. And that's where things get fun. So these are just, again, one story I'm bringing you Wall Street, Unplugged Premium. That's our podcast. Be talking a lot more detail tomorrow with Daniel about this if you're interested. Can WSUoffer.com. It's $10 a month. You can subscribe one month and say, Frank, I don't like you. And then I don't like this podcast or whatever. And you can cancel. That's all it is. $10 a month made it affordable for everyone out there. And now that I attach a newsletter to it, which is a trading newsletter, become a trading idea every single week through Dollar Stock Club. But again, these are the stories that we're going to touch up on. And you should get familiar and you should be worried. Because for them to shut down accounts for people who aren't doing anything wrong, who are working their asses off, that's a really big deal, guys. That's something I never thought I'd see. I never thought I'd see the government put banks out of business. What I, they didn't do anything illegal. Nothing was proven yet. No fraud was proven. 
and you just put them out of business. All because of an agenda where you got some guy up there and saying, okay, this don't see guy, just throw him out there and saying, writing a letter on a 27th sentence to every bank and saying, you guys better get the hell out unless you want to get audited. And I want you to sell everything crypto. Wow. Where did that come from? We're going to talk to people on the inside. I'm going to be interviewing people on the inside. Again, I'm not going anywhere with this story. It's going to be really, really exciting. And more importantly, I'm going to teach you how to make money off of this. So learn more. Tune in tomorrow. And feel free. If you're out there, if you're into crypto, if you have connections or whatever, feel free to email me. Okay, that's where I get the best information from is from you. So many people within these industries. Tons of emails from people that got their accounts closed, crypto companies. I couldn't believe this happened to so many hundreds and hundreds, maybe over a thousand businesses out of nowhere of companies that are doing the right thing. But feel free to send me, send me an email, frankcurseresearch.com. That's frankcurseresearch.com. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.